Hey, podcast family. Welcome to Strategy Rewind. I'm your host, Miguel LeBron. The biggest question we have to answer is how do goal-oriented people accomplish their breakthrough moment? And that is exactly what Strategy Rewind focuses on. Stick around as we jump into tactics and strategy to help you have a breakthrough moment. Your current position does not dictate your future. Your attitude does that. (laughs) Your attitude and my attitude is what dictates if our dreams become a reality or if they only come alive when our eyes are shut. Today, I want to share with you a full conversation I had with Chef Wilfredo Algonzoni, who started his journey working at McDonald's, then worked at a food court, and now owns a restaurant. He's a local chef here in Rochester, New York, but I want to highlight this conversation. In it, there are some golden gems and actionable steps that you can apply, that I can apply, that we can all apply to have our breakthrough moment and make sure that our dreams come alive. I'm sitting here with Chef Wilfredo Arganzoni. Hey, everyone. I'm so excited that you would be part of the podcast here today. For those who aren't familiar with the work you're doing, let them know about yourself. I'm a co-owner right now of Palermo's Market, downtown Rochester in the Merck on Main. Other partners are my brother and his wife, Ramon and Erica Arganzoni. We do what we love. We make food. We make people happy. We uh, have great customer service. And we just... We just go day by day and just enjoying what we do and just a blessing what we're able to do every day. Now, your journey is a powerful one uh, with regards to those who are not following Chef Fredo on Instagram. Go do it right now. Not only are you going to be starving and drooling, but it's amazing story that you share there. One of which is the story of how you started off working at McDonald's and you managed to keep your dreams alive. For those who haven't read that story that you published, let them know about that journey. So I worked at McDonald's for about 15 years in total, separate, not all at once. It was two two different big chunks and then a break in between. My love for food came from growing up. I'm part Puerto Rican, part Italian. I have uh, some mixed, mixed cultures. Grew up around different different cultures, different island folks. So I got to learn about a bunch of different things as a as a young young child. I worked with my mom, my dad in the kitchen a lot. We used to make like a, a bunch of Spanish cuisines, pasteles, acapulias, flan, boudin. I mean, you name it, we were making it, we'd sell it. So we used to have a stand at the market. We started there. So it just became a part of me. Uh, and as I got older, my dream was always to like run a restaurant, own a restaurant, be be a cook. But sometimes, you know, along the way, we forget what we really wanted to be. So, you know, going through life, it's easy to get off track of like what your dream is because you got to make money, you got to pay bills. I mean, you got to eat. So um, I went to school, you know, at, graduated from Edison a uh, year early. I was 16. I went to MCC for a while. So I started working. Then from there, like I didn't end up finishing. And, you know, of course, I'm about to be 18. I want to have my own place. So now I'm working, you know, at McDonald's, you know, I'm working there full time. Now I'm not in school anymore. So now, you know, five years in, you're like, wow, it, it was quick. It went from, oh, I'm going to do this for a while. Next to it's five years, I'm, I'm been at McDonald's. But uh, one thing always stuck with me from when I was a kid, my mom said, no matter who you think's not watching, just do the best you can and make the best of your situation. So a lot of people don't know is like McDonald's has great systems and great management. Now, we don't see those things often. We just see the bad things, the fights on YouTube and all those things like that. But if you actually work there and you actually take it a minute to take somewhat seriousness from it, it's a reason why they're one of the biggest franchises in the world, one of the most successful and most profitable businesses in the world. So what I did was I started learning how to become a manager. And from there, they actually sent you to seminars. And these seminars are usually about three days. And they're college accredited. So they're, they're, su- they're such reputable that co- colleges across the nation give you credits for them. So I did that for about five years. But sometimes, you know, along the way, we forget what we really wanted to be. I uh, made a few mistakes, ended up 
leaving there for a while. And then next, you know, you're like, I'm not focusing on what I want to focus on. And I'm, I'm losing myself. 10 years later, I'm like, wow, like, I really want to do a restaurant. And I'm not even in the restaurant industry anymore. Like, you know, I'm just trying to make it, you know, I'm just bills are tight, you know, got to eat. So then I ended up coming back to McDonald's. It was supposed to be temporary again, as well as temporary things. And next thing you know, I'm there for a long time. They always got something new. So I just kept learning new things. And then I actually got to a point where I just felt stuck, lost, and I felt like there was no hope anymore. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have felt that way in their jobs or they're like, I hate this. Why am I here? Like, I don't want to go to work. But, you know, I had a daughter. So it's like, if I don't go to work, she doesn't eat. So I got to be a father. It really got depressing to a point where it's like, I don't want to do this anymore. And um, kind of just got to sit there and, and, and just be like, well, I got to start believing in myself. Because if I don't, who's going to do it? So, like, I want people to know, like, it's not all, like, everyone hears these stories, like, oh, it's so cool, I did that. But, like, you don't hear about all the down, the downs. I had always a lot of downs. I mean, went through a ton of stuff, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally. I remember one day this this one girl who worked for me for a long time, she's like, when did you get so mean? And I, and I really, and it really hit me. I was like, wow, like, I really lost myself. I really became this, like, angry you know, that's why you see that a lot of times you get grumpy people like why are these people so grumpy at work? They didn't they didn't expect to be there 15 years. You know what I mean? And um, so I ended up starting a food cart with my brother. I mean, I changed my life a lot. So I'm doing a lot of things. I started, uh, you know, reading the reading the good word again, man, and start believing in God. And, and he really he really lifted uh, me and my family. I'm not just me, like the people around me. I mean, I could really start seeing a change. I mean, I seen a change in me, my brother, you know, my family, my kid. And um, so we just went from there. I mean, we, we got together, started a food cart. We used to be on Goodman and Gray Street. I was with my other brother and and uh, his girlfriend at the time. I mean, we, we started making um, like homemade sausage, burgers, things of that nature. Uh, about 15 years prior to this, my brother was working at Palermo's Meat and Food Market on Culver and Norton. And my father was the head butcher there as well. So the, the trade of butchery is in the family. And um, we were able to resurrect some of those amazing products that we used to make and uh, serve it to people on the street. And people were just blown away that like you were, they were getting this like essentially gourmet meat on a corner. I mean, we started making a burger out of ribeyes. So people were just like, I'm getting a ribeye burger on a street on a corner. Chef, as you think back to that moment with the food court, is there a particular lesson that really stands out to you from that particular moment? Now I think back to it, we we would have so many people getting together there that you would never think would be sitting side by side. We had like ex judges from Hilton sitting on sitting at this little rinky dink table with holes in it. You know what I mean? And um, the dude next to him would be a big time drug dealer or something. And, you know, I don't judge anyone. You know, I, I made some mistakes in my life, had a couple of criminal uh, incidents in my life as well. So, you know, that hindered me a lot. But, you know, especially in the inner city, I want people to know, like, you can make those mistakes and there's still ways to be successful and still ways to turn your life around, you know. And I think that's what what's uh, really a most important thing about what we do is we realize, too, like, all the mistakes we made, like, or the, or the bridges we burned, they can be repaired food really brings people together and um you get someone to sit down to eat something good it makes you feel happy and the next thing you know you're having a conversation with someone and you're like wait you know on the news they paint these guys as like savages or they paint me as some elitist judge or something you know for example and next thing you know you guys are laughing and having fun and then when you leave you're like well you know maybe the world isn't so bad and, and the crazy thing about it is we started that right when covid started i remember because we were the last literally the last restaurant last any any food thing to get certified for like six months they were like you guys just get squeaked in because we weren't going to do any more of these everyone's doing covid the the county health uh health inspector was like oh yeah this is all going to blow over in about 14 days don't worry about it you know fast forward two years later you know we're we're all like wow this is this has been nuts but um there was a lot of positivity that came came from that Chef, talk a little bit about the challenges you may have faced during that time period with the pandemic just initiating. I mean, there was a lot of obstacles. So again, like, like this is part of the story a lot of people don't hear about. It's like, yeah, we didn't know 
two years ago that that hot dog cart would turn into what we're in now. But it's amazing where like you can go, but it, it would have never happened if we would have never stepped out. I think back and I was like, I got I got a kid. Bills were tight. I ended up leaving a job I was at for a long time, even though I didn't like it. It was secure. And I knew that my bills were going to get paid. It might be tight every week, but I knew my bills were going to pay. I had to leave that, go out on faith, you know, trust in God, trust in myself, and, and see where it would take me. You go from working at McDonald's to putting your dream in the back burner to then launching out. And like you said, launching out in faith and launching this food court. How do you get from the food court through the pandemic and then arriving to where you are now? being a co-owner of a restaurant. So before the Merck I may even opened up, it was a project in the work for five years before we even got involved in it. Down there in the Sibley building, they got a, a public commissary. So what a commissary is, is like a public shared kitchen where you can rent space to prepare your food for your food cart and trailer, or maybe you just want to do a pop-up. You have all those abilities down there. And uh, if it wasn't for that, we would never got to where we are. So we went down there to learn about it. And uh, my two brothers went, and there was a security guard there named Mr. G. And he said, oh, you guys are coming for the commissary. Oh, you guys sell food. Maybe you should talk to this guy. He's ahead of this project here. And his name was Ken Green. And uh, he gave my brother, my two brothers, like 30 seconds in the hall. He was like, you got 30 seconds, go. Started talking to him. Next thing, he'll turn to a few minutes. Things like, okay, well, come back this day. Bring me samples of food. And we prepared some food. My brothers took it in for the meeting. They were blown away by the quality of our food because we were everything from scratch, which is nowadays is almost unheard of. For one, food is really expensive. And two, it's really hard to get people that know how to not only butcher meat, but turn it into sausage or season or, you know, do all those things. We ended up getting an offer to join the project. Again, this isn't COVID starting the peak. Chef, it's one thing for you guys to branch out and say, we're going to start a food cart. And obviously, I mean, it takes, as you mentioned, it takes moving in faith and believing in yourself, your skills, etc. But now you guys, in the middle of this pandemic, make the decision to start a restaurant. I mean, people must have thought you were crazy to even try to do it under those circumstances. Talk a little bit about the challenges or maybe even support that you found at that moment. So COVID started the peak the first time around this time and everyone told us don't do it i mean i get it why people were telling us that but again we had to take a leap of faith because downtown rochester was dying if if you're from rochester you know i mean we had midtown down there we had now they they were all gone the bus stops are gone there's nothing down there rainbow's gone i mean there's literally nothing down there you just see homeless people or drug addiction or things like that running rampant down there so people like oh you know don't go down there who's gonna shop there who's gonna support you guys but you know you know we were a little nervous at first but again we stepped out on faith and we ended up opening up I mean overwhelming support when we first opened it was I mean unbelievable the amount of numbers we were doing our first month open like people were just blown away I mean we were blessed but again we had to step out on faith because we were listening to everyone that says don't do it and it wasn't just like no, but anybody just saying that. No, these are like owners of businesses. These are like influential people telling us, you guys are psychopaths for doing that. Don't go down there. Lawyers saying, I'm telling you as your lawyer, don't go down there and things like that. So it's like, you got to go against people who are quote unquote professionals. And who, here we are, lowly hot dog cart, McDonald worker, you know what I'm saying? Nobody. And we're trying to start this business in the middle of a pandemic in downtown Rochester, which is quote unquote dying. But just in the time from when we opened now, it's it's a big change down there. It was great to have events across from our business. Not only that, in the center of our city, because for our city to ever be successful or grow, we need to have an infrastructure downtown, which survives. That's why big cities are thriving. New York City, places like that. Their downtown sector needs to have people, business, and things to do. So the whole downtown has been really on a big, big uptick. I mean, there's plenty of housing down there now. They also learned that they need to take these buildings that were empty 
They're like, well, let's do something with them. Let's turn them into incubators. So there's science incubators, technology incubators. We're the food incubator. So in the city building, we do the food. So starting to see all these things pop up around us, all these new businesses pop up around us. It's really cool, man. Like, it's really cool to see these things, especially for me. Like, I always believed in our city as a young kid and other people like, oh, it's just dying. It's just dying. Well, someone has to do it. Someone has to start saying, let's put our foot in the ground right here. Let's draw the line. And this is where we're going to make a change. Chef, most often individuals will have a dream. They'll have a goal of something they want to accomplish. They face adversity, but they seem to lose that motivation. Talk about about that motivation, that anchor that kept you going. So, again, like I said, that original step out on faith went from a hot dog cart to a restaurant. Now to two restaurants inside the mercantile on Main called Magusta. Not only that, working with my family, being my own boss finally being able to reap rewards that I felt I was deserving of for a long time. Whereas in a, in a, when you're working for other people, you're usually not going to get you what you feel you deserve. And, you know, I'm not just saying like I deserve things because people have an entitlement. I know I worked harder than everyone else around me and it's not to toot my own horn. It just, the way I was raised, my mom grew up on a farm. My dad grew up on a farm. You know, they had to work hard. It's like the old school hard work. It's just how we were, how we were taught. So we know that hard work is super important, but we also know that hard work isn't all of the equation. What would you say to that individual who's struggling right now to keep their dream alive, but they're working chef, they're doing what they got to do. What word of encouragement, what could you tell that person to stay going forward? You have to work hard in the right way. I was working hard for a long time and it wasn't getting nowhere. I had to learn how to work hard, but for the right direction. That's the problem with people. They have a dream. They're like, I know I can see Z. I'm at A. Oh, here's B, here's C. Well, I don't know how to get to, you know, D, E, F, G. So what we're, what I like to try to do is show people like, oh, here's the next step. You know what I mean? People took the time to do that for us. And once you learn that, like, everyone's not out to get you, everyone's not lying to you. Now, there are some people that will be deceptive. You have to use um, wisdom and use, use guidance, but there's a lot of people that are willing to help you. You just have to learn to listen, but people's problem is they don't like to listen. And they think they know everything. I know that I've learned a tremendous amount in the past two years. I mean, this is why I tell people, it's, it's amazing that some days I've sat down at the table with people who make way less than me and people that make more in a week than I probably ever make in my life. But it's amazing that we can all sit at a table downtown and have these conversations and just have a conversation. You mentioned earlier that when you were working at McDonald's, you went through those training programs and you were a manager and you were right. You were leading a team. Now that you're in the position that you are, how much of that plays a factor or those lessons you learned, how much of that play a factor today? And, and believe it or not, man, like most of those skills I learned there, I'm actually imp implementing now. I'm using my advertising, my, uh, like my forecasting with our sales, inventory, breaking down prices, just learning, learning like little things like that over the years at McDonald's. All those things are useful to me now. And I think about it some days, I was like, this is why I had to go through that. I know everyone doesn't believe in God. I do. And I, I tell you this, you might feel he forgot about you. You might feel like he betrayed you or why you're in this position. You got to go through things to appreciate what he's going to give you. And I went through things for 15 years, hard struggles. You know, I had a lot of fun too. But I mean, some hard times, man. But now I look back and it, those hard times don't seem like anything because it was all worth it. If I was to close tomorrow, it would be all worth it. You know, you, you, you mentioned that journey from, you know, being at McDonald's and walking away, coming back and, and that feeling that oftentimes we feel like I got to punch in, I have to go in because there's no other option. But you also mentioned of just keeping that that faith of alive and keeping that hope alive and maintaining that dream amongst so many other gems that you've dropped here on what you're saying. But for those who are listening, who are 
saying, man, I'm in the same boat right now. I'm in the, I'm in the thick of it. I'm in the mud. How do I get out? What are some actionable steps we can give to those individuals who right now, maybe it seems dark for them and they're not seeing their dream as a possibility. Like you said, they see A, B, but Z seems too far away. Just to quote Ken Green, this is, this is one of the first things he ever told me when we met. He said, don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. And I take it to heart now. Like, it's very serious. I take it very serious. Because some days I'm tired when I leave, man. And, I, you know, we do long days, 14-hour days. And I'm like, I don't want to do anything. But there'll be an email I got to send out. Or we got to do a pricing for a catering order or something. Do it and get it out the way. Because if you keep putting it off for tomorrow, tomorrow turns to a month, turns to a year, turns to a year 40, you need to have a look in the mirror and realize, what am I doing to stop myself from doing this? And you got to be honest, because a lot of times you're going to lie to yourself. It could be you're wasting money on something you don't need to be wasting money on. It could be instead of you meeting people or learning or educating yourself about what you want to do, you're watching TikTok or et cetera, things, things of that nature. So like, just say you wanted to be an artist. So instead of learning new techniques, you're doing everything else. And, you know, you're not being proactive in yourself. You know, everyone has a different path, but that's how you get stuck in the mud. You know what I mean? So that's, that's probably the, the first two things I would say. The next thing I would say is look into people who are in that position already and see what you can learn from them. And, and, and be humble. Like, you got to be humble. I, I think back to some of my teachers I had, and I just tell them, I know, I know. He's like, no, you need to be humble. You need to listen. My dad would say the same thing, like, what are you going so fast for? Slow down and listen. Look around. You know what I mean? And, and now that I'm in the position I am, it's very true. Like, you can learn a lot just from staying quiet or just from paying attention. Someone did it before you or something similar. And, and, and they, they found a way to do it. So you got to find a way to replicate it. And if you can't replicate it exactly, you need to find a way to do it a little different. You know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that either. The other thing I would say is just, I mean, honestly, man, you need to trust, trust in God and, and trust that he's going to take you to the, to the right spot. And, um, and, and when, he, when you're in a position where, you again, you feel like he's left you, he's not. He's just getting you ready for something else. And sometimes... It's things you want that he doesn't want you to have at that time, or or maybe he has a different, bigger, better plan for you. It's an inspiring story. It's an awesome story. And I think, you know, it's a relatable story. Like you said, oftentimes people see, oh, he owns a restaurant or oh, the, the person is on this particular position. Yeah, but there was a journey there that can't be denied. But as you mentioned, within that journey, there are some there are some steps, some actionable steps that we can all take to have that breakthrough moment. Now, you're doing some awesome things with your restaurant and at downtown here in Rochester, New York. For those who want to get connected with you and try out your amazing food, how could they do so? Step one, you can come down to the restaurant in the Sibley Building, 240 East Main Street, right on the corner of East Main and Clayton across from the transit. The other thing you could do, you could check us out, Palermo's Market on Instagram or Facebook, or you could follow us at Megusta on Instagram or Megusta Caribbean Cuisine on Facebook. My personal tag is chef underscore Fredo 585 on Instagram or will Fredo Argonzoni on Facebook. For anyone looking to get into the restaurant industry, or maybe you're, you're doing something now, you want to step, take a step towards getting it like official. I would definitely check out the uh, Rochester Commissary. You can check them out on rochestercommissary.org or just Google Rock Commissary. It should pop up. That's, again, a public shared kitchen for people who are looking to just rent space, maybe for your food truck, or you're looking to uh, take that next step in your business, again, which I think is great. They help you get you know, you know, know, certified through the health department. They have connections uh, that, that'll take you a lot longer, different, different ways. They help you get legitimate. I appreciate you so much for the insight that you have provided and the story that you have shared and the way you've shared so transparently and passionately. And thank you so much for being part of this episode. Thank you, Miguel. Thanks for having me. 
I'm so grateful that you would be connected with Strategy Rewind. Thank you so much. And thank you to today's guest. Head over to the show notes of this episode where you'll find their details so you can connect with them. But if you want to take a bigger leap towards your breakthrough moment, there in the show notes, you'll also find a link where you can set up a free 30-minute strategy session with me. It's imperative that you put these strategies to work so that you can have a breakthrough moment.